Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, to go and bear fruit that will remain. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. And Jesus said to the chief priest and the elders of the people, hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When the vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for a moment. In vine growing regions, the vineyard was always a thing of intense feelings. A vine would be watched over throughout the course of the season with intense scrutiny. They would agonize over it and how it was growing, watching patiently day by day until they would see the quantity and the quality of the harvest. And so the harvest day was a great feast filled with joy if the vine produced great fruit, a day of disappointment if it produced fruit that was mediocre, and a day of bitter mourning if it produced nothing worth picking. And so it's little wonder, I think, that the biblical authors choose the vine as the, the preferred image of the people of God, those whom God cultivates with his love and from whom God expects great fruit, expects beautiful fruit. Both Isaiah and Jesus use this image of the vine today to call their fellow Jews to repentance. God had, had lavished his love upon them and they had responded only with a kind of lukewarmness and indifference. The fruit they had yielded could only be called the grapes of wrath, for this is exactly what they would receive. They would receive the fruit of their, their own hands, the fruit of their own indifference. It was like a, a bucket of cold water thrown on a sleeping man. It was not received very well, either by the people in Isaiah's time or by the people in Jesus' day. But when we, when we listen to this gospel, we're not to read it with any kind of aggressiveness towards any group, whether it is the ancient Israelites or the Jews in Jesus' own day, but rather the church receives this, 
this gospel and its images as an admonishment addressed to herself. How could we look at it in any other way? The blood that is shed in the new covenant, the blood that Jesus sheds on the cross for us, the blood that he gives to us as our very food and drink is far more filled with with privilege and promise than the old covenant. And so Jesus tells the, the people that are listening to him in his day that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and it will be given to those who will produce its fruit. This is a solemn warning for all of us as Christian men and women. Our very election as Christians will witness against us unless we bear fruit that is acceptable to God and that is worthy of our great calling. We take the place of those who have gone before us, the many throughout the generations who, who fought the good a fight of faith, some who shed their blood for the sake of Christ, but also many others who because of their indifference, because of their lukewarmness, have made void their calling. We are present witnesses to the truth of the gospel. And yet we are told in light of today's readings that we preach the gospel, but only with a humble mindedness and that even though we rejoice at the great gift that has been given to us, we also carry that gift with a kind of trembling in our heart, knowing how precious it is to us. Let's pray today that our lives, our actions, would bear fruit that is worthy of the kingdom, that we would produce the fruit that Christ produced for the Father, a fruit that is redemptive, filled with selfless love and nourishing to everlasting life.